Hello, everyone. Welcome to this presentation in, in regards to the follow-up from our five-part series, Drone Field to Finish. What did we learn? What were the processes that worked best? What were the processes that could be refined a bit better to create even more accurate surface models for civil 3D? So today's agenda, so we went through parts one through five, created that recap photo model, created that mesh file, cleaned up that point cloud and recap pro, created that service in InfoWorks, we created another service in InfoWorks using Model Builder, so you had to bring in that TIFF file for that conceptualization proposal InfoWorks model. And then we exported out that combined blended in surface with Model Builder in that point cloud. And then we imported those surfaces into Civil 3D. So final piece, what did we learn? What worked best? What could, what could have been done better? And where's there room for improvement in terms of this whole process of this five-part series? So. First thing is uh, photo quality with those drone photos. So these are two things that, that that I would have liked to have seen be a bit better and it would have helped out with more accurate data. Uh, the first thing is the photo quality was a little low. Uh, part of this was because I flew the drone about 15, 20 minutes after first light in the morning. And you can see that the imagery isn't quite as crisp as I would have liked it. You can also notice that those target areas with those X marks on them didn't come didn't come across in those drone photos. I would also have flown the drone a bit lower next time, so I flew the drone at 150 feet above the takeoff location, and the tallest trees were not even 100 feet. So I would have, I would have definitely flown that lower. Um, so, and that definitely impacts the quality of the stitch model, and so more. And the other thing I would have done is that I, would, I flew the uh, drone at a max speed at, at miles per hour with a two second photo frequency. And that only equated to 160 photos for the model, which is definitely on the lighter side. I would definitely like to have seen between 300 and 500 photos for this project. Yeah, but it's really hard to go back out and collect data after you're done. Part of that was because the targets were then moved afterwards. So that would have been a, it, it would it would introduce more error than good. So, but in sum this up, I would like to take in more crisp photos, better lighting, mid, mid Midday is the best time for, for good lighting. Uh, the second thing is that I would have liked to have taken more photos to create a more enhanced model. So photo Christmas, number of photos, and the quality of those photos. Uh, the second thing we learned during this process is the vertical extraction tools. So in InfoWorks, this is a highly labor-intensive workflow. It also doesn't always pick up the object you're trying to extract. So if you have, for example, a tree or a bush, it won't recognize it unless it sees the entire bush or it may only recognize a specific small portion of it. And if you don't get those vertical features extracted, it'll blend them into the surface. So you'll see that photo on the bottom right, you see that those objects are actually blended into the surface. Now those are bumps in the surface, which aren't necessarily there. That's a tree, that's my truck in the bottom left of that bottom right photo there. So one thing that's important to do is either eliminate those vertical features using Recap Pro when you're editing the point cloud, edit it right down and get those vertical features out, or make sure you have really good imagery of those vertical elements, and that'll allow for InfoWorks to be able to see the entire vertical element in order to add the vertical extraction tools to it. In the long term, I have heard that you will be able to do the extraction in Recap Pro so that may be a really cool workflow that allows us to eliminate this super labor intensive part of using it for works. But for now, we still need to use the vertical extraction tools. And I definitely, in my next uh, process of taking photos, I would take more photos of those vertical features and see if I can get them all at once versus just getting little pieces of them and trying to extract the vertical features from them. Uh, the units, it's really important to make sure that you're using the same units throughout. One thing that, that I had happen with this project is I was using Opus to calculate the XYZ data, and the XYZ data was kicked out in international feet. And one thing I did is I was working upstream of it, trying to get those InfoWorks models set up prior to bringing in those RCS point clouds, and I created the model with uh, US survey feet. So it's really important to understand the units you're going to be working with for the, enti the entire duration of the project. And so just take note that when you create the project at the very beginning, if you get bad data, you got data that's not correct, it's gonna all trickle down. 
and you're going to have issues upstream and imports and civil 3D. So it's important to pay attention to those units and what you're processing things with. Uh, one thing in InfoWorks that's slightly confusing is configured versus imported. So this is two screenshots of the data sources in InfoWorks. So when you go to add that data source and then you click the point cloud to add it, it'll say configured. And that can be a bit confusing because configured you would assume is the past tense and the model should be visible. And the point cloud should be visible in the model. But you actually need to right click on that model and then say OK or close and refresh and then it will change from the configured state to the imported state. When you see that imported state, that means that RCS, RCP point cloud is now visible in InfoWorks. Uncategorized terrain services. So we saw this in video four, and this can be slightly confusing in terms of creating that terrain, but not seeing that terrain in my model. So this only happens when you have a model builder service. So to create that new blank model, you're not going to have that terrain surface go into that uncategorized state. So with that model builder surface in there, and then you bring the point cloud in, you generate the terrain from that point cloud, you need to blend that point cloud surface with that model builder surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that surface area from the point cloud and paste that into the model builder surface, so to speak, for those civil 3D users that understand that pasting process. So grabbing that uncategorized surface and then dragging it down into the ground surface, turning it on and then applying it. You will then see it in the model. By leaving it in the uncategorized state, you will not see that surface created from that point cloud displayed. And that's it that I had for processes in terms of what you see, what you don't see, what, what definitely hung me up while working and learning and I'm trying to really iron out this workflow. I hope all these uh, hope all these suggestions help you out. But one thing to really take away from this is your results are only as good as the workflow that you did to collect things. So it's really important to have good control points, have good photos, and make sure that you have a good process when creating that, and then things downstream will go much more smoothly.